Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing another project on the Z18. We're here at the back of the boat. We're going to be replacing the standard screw drain plug uh, with a new remote drain plug made by Flowrite. So I'm going to go over the steps involved and all the tools you need. Let's get started. So here's the drain plug that comes standard on these boats. It's just a twist drain plug that you hand tighten or sometimes I actually use um, some pliers to get a better grip and, and to tighten that. The only problem is that I think I got it a little too tight and if you, I don't know if you can see that, but this little tab here that you're supposed to hold on to is actually starting to rip. So the plug's in there good, but I don't think I'll be able to get it out. So that was sort of my main reason for deciding now is a good time to upgrade. So this is the remote drain plug by Flowrite. There is a cable that attaches to the plug and then it goes all the way up to a switch, kind of like um, the valve switches that operate your live well. And basically you can turn that to open to push the drain plug out or you can close it with a switch the other direction and it will pull it closed. So you can operate this drain plug either by you know wherever you end up installing this switch. So I'm going to put it over near the driver's seat. Some people put it in the splash well but basically you can operate your drain plug remotely from one of those locations. does come with all the hardware you need and some nice step-by-step -step instructions okay so this is a fairly simple job you don't need too many tools first on the list is a drill with a one and three quarter hole saw a driver putting in some Phillips screws a Phillips screwdriver pencil for marking holes, some painter's tape so that you can cover your fiberglass before you drill any holes just to keep things nice and clean, and finally some 3M 5200 marine sealant. I'm going to be putting this around the new drain plug. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is take the screws out of the existing drain plug housing here. See if I can take that off. I don't know if there's going to be any sealant behind there. There probably is. I'm going to have to scrape that. Yeah, it looks like there's some clear sealant that they used. Screws. Okay, popped right off. These new boats have all kinds of debris and stuff inside them. So I'm just gonna scrape off the rest of this clear sealant that they used and get this nice and clean. Now you do want to double check, you want to make sure this is a one inch diameter hole because that's what's going to be needed for our new one. So that does line up perfectly, that's a one inch hole, so we should be good. Okay, the drain hole is nice and clean. All the extra silicones rubbed is uh, scraped off. So now we're going to go over to the driver's seat and find our location that we're going to be drilling and installing our switch. Alright, so we're here at the driver's seat and I'm going to be installing my drain plug switch uh, immediately to the right of the driver's seat. And it's actually going to be right here above um, this little USB charger. 
A uh, couple reasons for putting it there. Number one, it's a nice straight shot back to battery compartment where the drain plug is. So that cable is going to be able to run directly to here. And this is um, open in the back, so there's really nothing in the way. So it should be nice and clean. The other reason is it's easy to get to while you are in the driver's seat. So it'll be a nice way to check before I launch. Look down real quick. Make sure that the drain plug is showing in. Um, so that'll be nice and easy for me. So the plan is to mount this in that general area, maybe squared up over squared up over the USB charger, right about there. So I'm going to eyeball this up as best I can, get it nice and centered, um, put some tape down, and then I'll mark a few little markings so I know exactly where I'm going to drill. So I have that area taped off right there, and I would always recommend taping off any area you're going to drill that's uh, made of fiberglass, just so that it gives you a nice clean edge and the fiberglass doesn't rip or tear uh, on any of the edges. So that switch is going to go right about in that area. Actually, before we drill, I should show you the path that our cable is going to go to get back to our drain plug. So, as you can tell, this is a seldom used container here for me, but in these nitros, these storage bins come out. And then what you're left with is a clean view all the way down to the bottom of the boat. So the area that we're drilling is right above where that uh, USB power supply is. So you can tell there's actually the other cable to our live well valve runs right past it, but it shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be in the way for us to go ahead and install this right above that power supply. So it's gonna come out there and then, of course, our cable will run just along the bottom of the boat, right into the battery compartment and right down to that bottom part, the lowest part in the bilge that connects to the drain plug. Wasn't so bad. Cool. Let's get the tape off. I'm happy with how that turned out looks good in there so the next step would be to run our cable through the drain plug hole um, up to this hole and then connect it to the switch and then connect the end of it to the drain plug itself and make sure that those connections are solid before we actually start screwing these uh, fittings in so let's do that next Okay, so now that we have the hole drilled for the switch over by the driver's seat, we're going to go ahead and thread the cable from that hole back through to the bottom drain hole. So it's going to come out of our hole that we drilled, and it's going to run 
down the floor under this compartment and then into the battery compartment and then down the hole uh, out the back where the drain plug goes. It makes the most sense to run it in that direction because this end is connected to the switch and this end is connected to the drain plug. So we're going to feed this end in so that this end is left at the switch. So let's get started. There's a nice convenient opening that goes from this underneath compartment area right back into the battery compartment. So that's super easy to get to. There's actually a little stand here that holds the batteries up off the floor of the boat and I think I'm going to run this cable underneath of it so it won't be over top of any of the wires so it'll go it'll tuck right down into there and then it should head towards that drain opening in the back we'll probably have to go down and shine some light in from the bottom so we can actually see where to pick that up and what do you know there's my cable hmm. now it's just a matter of getting it at the right angle to actually come out of this opening Well, you don't want to push it too far because then it won't come out at all. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got my cable. Let's go into the hole from the switch. It'll be under this compartment, into the battery compartment, underneath this black battery tray, and down to the drain hole. Now we just have to connect each end to the switch and to the drain plug itself. Okay, so according to my instructions, next step is to connect the actual drain plug assembly here. And the drain plug itself that's going to be sliding in and out has a little groove in it. And this wire is actually gonna fit in that little groove. So that is step one. Okay, that fits in there. And then we're going to take this top piece and sandwich it on there so that that kink stays inside it and attaches the wire to the plug. And then we're going to get some screws and attach it permanently.
Okay, attached. Oh, rookie, rookie mistake. <laughs> so you gotta thread this and this through the hole first. Okay. Now we're talking. Next step is we're going to clamp down on this piece of the wire so that it stays in the same spot on the housing. There's a little enlarged nub right here and that is going to sit right in this little pocket. And then we'll clamp it down. Right there. So that should keep this the same space apart. and tight. There's my movement in my plug. Next I'll use these stainless steel screws provided and we'll secure it to the hull. So I'm going to get some marine, <coughs> get my 3M 5200 marine sealant. And we're going to get a nice bead around here so that we get a nice seal. Then we'll go ahead and get this attached. I think I am going to use the same holes that were used before, but I am going to put a good bit of this 3M 5200 on here just to really get a good attachment. That alone would be enough to hold this. It's pretty permanent stuff, but um, screws will help. Okay, cleaned up. Let's move up front and do the switch. Okay, so we have our switch here. This cable is actually gonna fit with this knob on the inside of this slot. So it's gonna sandwich between this plastic square part and the knob, and it's gonna sandwich right in there on the actuator like that and then the cable itself has to thread into this hole so it's probably easier to thread the cable before you slide in the knob okay cables in 
turn this so the knob slides in and there you go it's attached and when you move this see how it is now pulling our cable very good so now I'm gonna get this in this hole here and get it nice and level and mark it and then I'll drill two pilot holes and then we'll use the supplied screws and put it in permanently. All right, there it is, all done. Get a little motion here, drain plug out, water draining from the bilge area, and drain plug in, ready to launch the boat. Drain plug out, draining water from the bilge, that's drain plug fully in, ready to launch the boat. You can feel a little bit of resistance right there where it hits the gasket, which is kind of nice. You can sort of feel that it's sealing. I'm sure I'm going to walk around every time and double check it, but it's nice to have the control right there. So there you go guys, we're all done. Probably only takes most people a couple hours to do this little project. Definitely get it done the same day. So I'm going to let this marine sealant cure for maybe 48 hours before I actually take this out on the water and test it out. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys on the next one.